So today we're going to be diving into artificial intelligence and more specifically reinforcement learning. Our goal with artificial intelligence in a certain sense is to give machines minds. Now with reinforcement learning, the way we give our machine a mind is by helping it identify states, allowing it to take actions and giving it rewards. Now the best way to actually demonstrate this is through an example. If we want to train our dog to sit, we need to give our commands to the dog, say sit, and the dog's going to sit and we're going to give it a treat, okay? So in this loop, there's three things going on. First, the dog needs to have some self-awareness in order to identify exactly what state it's in. For example, you said the word sit. However, another state could be fetch. Another state could be roll over. These are all unique states and the dog is going to need to know exactly what state it's in at all times. Now the second ingredient is action. When you say the word sit, the dog is free to take any action. It can sit, it can roll over, it can go fetch something. The last component we need in order for learning to be done is a reward. When we say the word sit, if we want our dog to learn how to sit, we're going to give it a treat whenever it sits. If we say the word sit, and the dog rolls over, we're not going to reward it, we're going to punish it instead so that it learns moving forward how to act optimally. Now enter cue learning and cue learning helps us train our machines in more practical applications. For example, in the real world, we need to account for stochasticity. How does the dog value you saying the word come here? Given half the time it comes to you, you give it a treat, whereas another portion of the time you're yelling at it. Another question you learning helps us answer is how do we account for future reward? Let's take this example here where we have an agent in the middle and its goal is to accumulate the most reward. Now, if we only had two moves, if it was only looking in the immediate sense, it would take the path to the right and grab the five and then take the path upwards to grab the two. However, in the grand scheme of this game, the actual most optimal path is to the left to grab the two and then move up and grab the 10. This is what Q learning is helping us account for randomness and future reward because our goal is not only to act optimally in the immediate sense, but it's also to act optimally taking into account future situations. Now enter the Q table. Here you can see at the top level, we have identified all of our states. And here on our left side, we have all of our actions. This table helps us identify the total expected return for every action from every state state, which essentially means how to act optimally in all given situations. So this has been a very high level overview of reinforcement learning, and we've started to touch upon Q learning. Now in the next video, we're going to dive deeper into Q learning, into Q tables, and more importantly, how are these Q values formulated and exactly how this is going to help our machine learn how to act optimally in all given situations. So thanks for tuning in on this one, and I'll see you on the next one.